For example 5, we are going to try to solve this partial fractions question um, by using the cover up method. Now this example will show you the limitation of the cover up method. And of course, uh, along the way, hopefully you may think that the cover up method is not a waste of time, but uh, a, a rather usable okay, shortcut. Right. So let's get started. So this is the um, fraction that we have to split up into partial fractions. So it is uh, already factorized for us. Okay, so we see um, two linear factors x minus 1 and x minus 2 but x minus 2 is actually a repeated factor okay so we know that well we can split this up into a over x minus 1 plus b over x minus 2 plus c over x minus 2 square okay so uh, very quickly by using the cover up method all right we sub in x equals to 1 we will get our a so we will cover up this x minus 1 and substitute in the value of x equals to 1 okay so substitute, substituting x equal to 1 the numerator we have 5 minus 2 which will give us a 3 okay 1 minus 2 which will give me a negative 1 negative 1 square will give me a um, positive 1 so it's 3 over 1 so immediately I know that my a is equal to 3 okay so Next, right, we will take a look at the remaining unknowns and that will be a B and C, right? Now, remember that I said earlier on that the cover method can only be applied to the constant, to, to the fraction with the highest power of the repeated factor. So in this case, the highest power of the repeated factor is a 2, right? It's being repeated twice. So we can only apply the cover method to find C and not B, okay? Then how do we do that? Well, same thing we are going to cover up this factor okay and substitute in x equals to 2 so when we substitute x equals to 2 okay we will get our c immediately and we have 2 multiplied by 5 that give me a 10 10 minus 2 that will give me an 8 right so 2 minus 1 and that give me a 1 so this over 1 again so my c is equal to 8 Okay, now this is where it is important that if you want to use the cover up method, you have to realize that it, for repeated factors like this, this case, this question, okay, you can only apply the cover up method to C. Alright, so when you substitute in x equals to 2, the value that you get, alright, will be for C and not for B. Okay, so this is very, very important because uh, when people learn the shortcut and they don't learn it properly, this is, uh, I mean, the shortcut end up hurting them. Okay, so of course this is not what I want to happen to you, so please remember carefully. So, now we are only left with the last unknown, which is B, isn't it? So how do we find B then? Well, although the shortcut helps you um, th that much, okay, to help you find the value for A and the value for C, um, it can't help you find B. Okay, so how do you find the B then? Well, you have no choice but do it the normal way. Okay, so that means to say, uh, you can multiply throughout to flatten the entire equation. Okay, so you have, uh, but of course, you already know what's A, isn't it? Alright, so that is not a big problem. I mean, we substitute in A's value, okay, along the way. So we have X minus 1, X minus 2, and of course, C will be X minus 1. And since we already know, the value for a and the value for c so this is an equation with only one unknown b right so what do we do of course what we're going to do we can substitute in x equals to zero why zero well actually any value you like okay you can sub in one you can substitute in two well really any value you like um, but the point is zero is a lot easier for us to work so we shall just use zero so z uh, to the left hand side we will have um, zero minus two that will give me a negative two right so to the right hand side this will be a zero 0 minus 2 will give me a negative 2. Negative 2 squared will give me a 4. 4 multiplied by A, which happens to be 3. So 4 multiplied by 3, that will give me a 12. Okay? Alright? So when this is a 0, this is a negative 1. Okay, when this is when x is 0, this is negative 2. So negative 1 multiplied by negative 2 will give me a positive 2. Positive 2 multiplied by B, that will give me a 2B. Okay, here we go. Now, and lastly, when x is 0, 
we will have 0 minus 1 and that will give me a negative 1 negative 1 multiplied by C which happens to be 8 so of course that will give me a negative 8 so working this equation out is not a big problem for you I hope so uh, by shifting here and there eventually you will get B is equal to negative 3 okay so I mean the working here shouldn't be a problem for you right so this is very elementary so B will be equal to negative 3 okay and therefore we we'll present our final answer we have to need uh, we really need more space so let's screw up a little bit okay great so finally we can say that okay this fraction all right, x minus 1 square can be expressed into a partial fraction like this so there will be a 3 over x minus 1 um, minus 3 over x minus 2 plus 8 over x minus 2 square so this is the solution the answer to the partial fraction questions okay so I hope this example will show you all right pro to how to properly use the cover up method okay as you can see I mean I don't know about you but I think that the cover up method is something worth learning okay in a way it really helps to uh, you know help up help to speed things up a little bit here okay at least to find a and c okay 